The day you've been waiting for is finally here. You can stow that chub away because today I've secured the most anticipated monitor of 2023. The Asus PG27AQDM, great name, 240Hz OLED is firmly secured between my cheek, I mean in my hands. And guys, this review is definitely going to shock you and you know how it is. I always come first. So if you want to be the first to see new reviews, make sure to beat the f out of the subscribe button and bell icon. But enough is enough. Let's take a look at this bad boy starting off with the specs. And here we're talking about a 2560 by 1440, 240 hertz, 27 inch, 16 by 9 W OLED MLA panel with a heat sink with a PPI of 111, a contrast ratio of allegedly 1,500,000 to 1, an alleged response time of 0.03 milliseconds. Yes, it's free sync and G sync compatible. And yes, it is HDR. Now, in terms of the stand, it's absolutely fantastic. It looks great, even has a light underneath. And does everything you would want a stand to do. In terms of the ports, here it gets interesting. It has a DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC that can support 240 hertz at that 1440p resolution. But unfortunately, it only comes with two HDMI 2.0 ports not 2.1. So these ports are effectively useless and do not allow you to get really much out of this monitor whatsoever and is also going to hurt its compatibility with consoles and the like. So very, very bad to see that there. And honestly, Asus, come on, do better. Now it does have a headphone jack. And in terms of USB hub, it has two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A's. And yes, it is VESA mount compatible. So that's great. And at a price of $999, it's in direct competition with its LG alternative. And this one has a heatsink and should be pushing the brightness much higher. And speaking of brightness, let's start out with that first because I know that's the big question in the room now. HDR peak brightness in 100% window, I measured an incredible 221 nits, which might not sound that impressive if you're used to LCD monitors, but for OLED, that's very good. And in fact, it puts it not only above the S95B, but puts it around 50% higher. Yes, that's right, 50% higher than the LG alternative, which is also $999. So very, very good stuff to see there. In a 10% window, it also impressed with 937 nits, actually putting it in the upper half of some of the brightest monitors that I've tested thus far, and also putting it much, much higher than the 689 nits that I measured out of the LG monitor. So a huge improvement once again, and it goes to show you how much the MLA panel and the heatsink are adding to this display. Now, in terms of actual gaming brightness, once again, very impressive, 902 nits out of this monitor, putting it far above, in fact, over twice as bright as the LG one for the same money. So that's absolutely insane and is definitely going to give you much brighter highlights. Now, in terms of the minimum brightness here, it was, I guess, a little disappointing because for some reason I could not measure zero nits out of this thing, even though it is an OLED and should be giving you zero nits. And that could be coming down to the matte finish that they're using, maybe refracting some sort of light from the sides. But that does unfortunately give it a contrast ratio that I measured of 25,100 to one, which is still very, very good. And of course, is going to look much better than even mini LED in terms of contrast ratio but is actually falling far short of the infinite contrast ratio I've measured on other glossy OLEDs. Now, does it have any overclocking? No, absolutely not. And in terms of the total system latency, I measured 27.3 milliseconds, putting it as the second fastest monitor I have ever reviewed, just barely short of the LG one, which do keep in mind, this is with a thousand FPS camera, and then I gotta actually count the frames. So there could be a one millisecond difference uh, here or there due to human error. But hey, it's still very, very accurate. And that does go to show you that this is a very fast display. In terms of the max power draw on a full white screen, very impressive, only drawing 58 watts, which puts it way below the 257 watts of the S95B Quantum Dot OLED TV. Another impressive thing here, guys, is the motion performance. I know this is a big reason as to why people are purchasing this display, and it's a good one because here we can see we've reached a point where it's effectively just a screenshot, and you really can't ask for a whole lot more unless you are willing to do something like black frame insertion. So very, very good and is definitely the best one I've seen thus far when it comes to motion. But now we gotta talk about the color because guys, here's where things get 
really strange. So an SDR was very good overall. I did see a white point of 6,400K roughly. So that's very close to the 6,500K I'd like to see. The RGB values were fairly close and it only had a Delta E of 3.7. So we got to talk about the finish. So this is fucked up. We should not be putting a matte finish or even semi-matte finish on OLED displays. In fact, we should not be putting that finish on any premium displays at all. It is absolutely horrendous that monitor manufacturers continue to believe that a matte finish is a good thing to put on a premium display. It is not. It does not stop reflections. It diffuses them, which could make it less distracting to some, but unfortunately that same diffusion happens to the light that's coming off the display. So it actually makes the display look incredibly blurry, sometimes oily, and can give you a grainy effect over the monitor. And get, this is so fucking stupid that we are spending over a thousand dollars on a monitor and getting a grainy piece of shit. So I'm sorry, I cannot let this slide anymore. Could this be the best monitor ever created? Yeah, it certainly could. And in terms of the actual motion performance, it's blazing fast, making this probably the best monitor you can possibly buy today. Again, once they fix HDR, for competitive gaming. But in terms of the image quality, it has been absolutely mangled by not only the horrible HDR that's going on right now, but also the matte finish they chose to use, which should never ever be considered ever again and shouldn't have been considered to begin with for any OLEDs or any super high-end premium displays as it completely ruins the image. It makes it pointless to spend so much money on trying to get a good image when you can just go buy a TV for cheaper that looks way more clear, way more vibrant, gives you way better contrast, and frankly has just as good of reflection handling. So I have no idea why they want to continue to use these horrible finishes but they are, and you're just gonna have to deal with it if you wanna buy this display. Once you've used a TV as a monitor or seen a glossy monitor, it is impossible to go back. So please, Asus, LG, anyone who sees this, I never wanna see a matte finish on a premium OLED display ever again. That is so f***ed up that you're doing that. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, RuPro has you covered with their RuPro AK HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes ranging from 3 to 165 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K at 60 FPS or 4K at 120 FPS HDR10 video through its ultra thin, flexible and durable housing, and it even supports eARC. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to to check out RuPro on Amazon today.